Bichum. He is a minister for education. And um, thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you. I'm also the member of parliament for Bosunchi. It is very, very important within the scheme of things that we're here. How, how would you say so far your um, membership in the legislature has been representing the people of Bosunchi? Oh, I, I mean, I represent the people of Bosunchi, and I think I've kept it with the people. Um, there are many things I've done that I never promised that I was going to do. I never campaigned on supporting 100 students to pursue engineering and medicine, but I'm doing it. So um, I believe I've done my very best for con the constituency. And uh, of course, it's politics. But I can say for the most part, the people appreciate the work I've done. Uh, we do know that there's a, a wider dream, especially you as a person uh, with your background in education and you serving in the ministry to promote um, science, uh, technology education, and mathematics kind of education we have in our country. Um, from where we are, how do you think uh, it's going so far at the policy level? I, I think STEM is on the upward trajectory. Uh, comes to think of it, only 12% of our high school students pursue courses in STEM, in science. And now we are looking at how do we move it to about 50%. So the new STEM schools that are under construction and the one that we have operationalized is going to give us that opportunity. I'm even more excited about STEM program for girls. There's one uh, school that has opened in Ashanti region, and then we have two uh, currently approved for construction. One will be upon Katamanso, uh, the other one uh, is going to be built in Kumase. So I believe that not only are we looking at improving STEM, but we're also looking at how can we improve the numbers of women in STEM. Uh, if you go to Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, only 18.5% of engineering students are women. That should not continue. We need to make sure that if the Free Senior High School has helped us to almost attain gender parity in secondary education, we can do better with parity in various professions. But the good news is that uh, Ghana is one of the few countries in Africa uh, where we are attaining gender parity in secondary education. 0.99 is excellent, and God willing, next year it may be 1.0. And if you go to a school with 200 students, half will be women, half will be men. Now, if you go to a school with 200 students in Ghana, 101 will be young men, and 99 will be women. And that parity will really send a strong message to the rest of the world that Africa is serious about the education of women. Uh, we do know that very much entrenched uh, within the structure of STEM is what is being done with the education free of course at the second cycle school level. But uh, with your own experiences, how do we continue um, making sure that we give free education but also making sure that the funding bit, that has become a topical issue because of the recent issues, are well mainstreamed in the dialogue within the public and the general Ghanaian environment. I, I think um, Free Senior High School is non-negotiable if we are talking about how education transforms our society. It doesn't make sense for the bright, uh, the, some brightest minds to be sitting in their own villages while the rest of us go to our Chimotas and Infancy Pens and Augustines. And we tell them, too bad. That is what the president wanted to avoid. His vision is that all children should have the opportunity for secondary education. And let the best man wins, the best woman wins. The best and the brightest will get the opportunity to move to tertiary and they will come out to serve their nation. Yes, there will be challenges. There's no program that has been implemented anywhere in the world, and there were no challenges. There are going to be challenges, but it's our resoluteness in challenging the challenge, confronting the challenge, and solving the problem. That will make us winners. And I believe that from where I sit, and from my background, everything is possible. Uh, you can achieve anything that you, are, you set your mind to. 
But if you want to cut and run, then you're going to have excuses and say, because of this, we can't do this. But we have 60 years of independence, 60 years plus. And if you look at it, uh, even us, at our age, there were a number of people we went to school with who were bright, never had a chance. And therefore, their future has not been brighter. So I believe that we need to get our loins and be determined that when the challenges come, we come together as a nation and we solve them so that the future of Ghana will be better than its past. You're you one minister who is very much uh, n uh, noted uh, to really engage the media on many uh, of the issues that may confront your policy implementation as a ministry, and I think that is a good thing. Uh, recently we had food shortages. Uh, from what you investigated, what accounted for the food shortages uh, as we had in some of the schools and not other schools? I know what we need to understand is that the inflationary pressures has impacted suppliers adversely because a supplier supplies uh, traditionally you pay them after 60 days, right? That is the norm. But somebody is going to supply today and believe that in 60 days what is going to happen to the money that I use today. So for the most part, people become hesitant. So the prior arrangements that they will have gladly accepted, now they are a little bit saying, hesitant, saying, do I accept, do I not accept? Whenever that happens, it affects the supply chain. So those are the hiccups. Uh, that, that is the reason why we are having hiccups in the supply chain. The good news is that our monies have been released and uh, and consequently, we're going to be able to pay suppliers so that they can keep on supplying. So I'm happy that by Friday, we had received around about 150 million, a part of which will go into school feeding, so that we can support suppliers to supply. So um, I understand the hesitancy, but we have to provide the funding. Minister of Finance has come through, controller has come through, we have money that will facilitate the process so that we can come back on track in terms of uh, supply of food and other items to our schools. So we have to try and wrap up. You've been speaking to the media um, for, for the last couple of minutes, so that, that should be hectic for you. But um, the next question then is, the argument has come about uh, perhaps we need to have a, po a policy public dialogue on funding of the free SHS. Uh, what's the mind of the ministry? What are you thinking there? Uh, in America, we say something that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm not going to tinker with something that is going well. Uh, within a period of five years, we have educated 50% uh, more students. So when you talk about uh, uh, looking at it, are you telling me to reduce the numbers? We've moved from 800,000 to 1.3 million. To the extent that this year the president extended free senior high school to free TVET. Now technical students are also enjoying it. What are people saying? I don't know what they are talking about. So what they are saying is perhaps we need to do some level of means testing. Get to see parents who can afford so that um, those parents can pay for some aspect of funding. And those, and, and those who cannot, we really, so that it reduces the burden on government. What do you say? So far... Those who have advocated for that, I always ask them, um, yes, you have money, so we should not take money from you. But since the placement is based on uh, the computer selection system, in case your child is sent to Jache Pram, so will you still pay? Sure, if I can pay. Uh, you are one of the few. Yeah, so, so, so why don't you let one of the few pay? Because... The bottom line is that the argument has been do fee pay so that I can go to Achimota. It's not that I can go to Trebidi Senior High School. It's not about that. It has never been, and, and for those who say they can pay, it will never be that they want to go to Trebidi uh, Senior High School, a school whose name they've never heard. If the computer plays in Trebidi, they will not go there and pay the fee. So we should be truthful to ourselves that whenever we say this, we have to be true to ourselves that 
it's not about wherever you place me. But people are making the argument that I want to pay to go to Achimota. Hey, Augustine's I will pay. Hey, I will pay any money to go to Wesley Girls. So we clear Wesley Girls for those who can pay. And then the poor student from Jache don't get to go to Wesley. So my brother, I believe in equity to the extent that those so-called rich people who pay the taxes should also not be prevented from getting something from them for free. They are the ones who pay the taxes anyway. So the one paying the taxes, when we are implementing a policy and it's free, we say no, you shouldn't get it for free. They are the ones paying taxes. The means testing. My brother has a large plantain, uh, plantation. Um, he may be do, getting it for free and the chief director of the Ministry of Education, whose salary I know, is the one who is going to have to pay. So it's not that simple when you talk means testing in Africa. Yeah. I know the type of pressure we all put on you on this subject. It's become a tiny subject. Uh, last question. The IMF team came to Ghana. W was there a conversation? Was there a conversation about whether we need to take a look at funding for some of the programming? At my level, but I know that the, the president has made it clear that free senior high school should not be touched. You, want, you wanted to say something, something good for us, right? Uh, TV3, I like you guys, but when you report on me, I want fairness and I want equity. Oh, and, 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 and I think so far we've been very fair, and, and especially we have good relationship. In your question, there's nothing bad about it. Thank you very much, sir. People who write after this. Oh, you mean the online portals. 3 News.com 3 news is one of the best online portals. I hope so. Well, because by the time you know what you said, they won't let you say. Oh, definitely. Well, I think that you said a lot of positive things. If, if, if we will have to let you go. Uh, if, there's, uh, if there are three things you think that over the last six years, even as Deputy Minister, Minister, we've achieved, what would they be? And what would you say and encourage Ghanaians for us to continue with those policy achievements? I think it's one first thing is the fact that the government, the president, have given opportunity to, for all to access secondary education. And also the near gender parity, making Ghana one of the first countries in Africa to have a 0.99 uh, uh, gender parity, I think is excellent. Our uh, infrastructure expansion that we've never seen before. It's a great achievement uh, for the president, for the country. And I think keeping faith with Ghanaians, promising something and delivering it, it's a very good part of our political dispensation. The fact that the president promised and said, I promise I'm going to stick with it, I'm going to deliver. I think that is very fresh in our political dispensation. Because invariably, what some politicians have done will have been, I promise, but give me two years, three years, and I'll deliver. He promised, came into government 2017, free senior high school was implemented. So that keeping faith with the people is something unique, is something that is going to be part of the history of this nation. It has to be part, part of the fabric of our society that a politician promises and the politician delivers. Thank you very much. And uh, the Member of Parliament for Muslim Trade, but also the Minister for Education, Dr. Yawase Educhum, helping us have some great discussions. We'll be having uh, right with us Ellen Amadakum, um, uh, garnering for the position of National uh, Women's Organizer for the Governing New Patriotic Party. But I have to say that great atmosphere. Uh, we can also uh, give you some uh, vivid descriptions of all that's happening uh, so far. We have trickling in in small numbers and number of delegates. Indeed, they all haven't come yet. So you can find that many of the stands are quite empty. We'll give you those pictures very soon, but a bit of the conversations, and then you also get to know what's happening. But for the pictures, um, we can also just turn around and so that you can see some of the pictures as it is. So this is what we have. We have um, Onya here as well, and Onya is also doing some great work. And then you find in between, this is what we have. So the stage is set, and the theme is holding together, working together. And it's the 
the National Annual Delegate Conference of the Governing New Patriotic Party. You can see also the outdoor uh, symbols of the elephant, well polished in royal blue. And then also in the inner perimeter, those who have been allowed from the protocol team, the security team, those with national security, the Ghana National Police Service, and then the other participants as well as personnel who have been deployed to make sure that everything is okay. So this is the stadium. And so far, we have Anthony Abe for Kabul, uh, former minister, deputy for roads, also uh, being one of the main MCs for today's event. But look, while we give you a sneak peek of all that's happening, we will just turn our lenses around. We've seen a number of hopes in Adoya, one big personality within the new patriotic party who is also around, will be joining us in a, in a matter of minutes. But right now, let's get to speak to Ellen Amadako, gunning for the position 